Hello, I'm LVD. Glad you could join me today. If this is your first time with us, let me extend a personal invitation to drag out your wild cards and build along with us each week. Today we'll be making a mono red control deck. Now I've already prepped the canvas where we'll be building the deck. On your screen you will also see some of the more popular meta decks at the moment. These are good to keep in mind when building a new deck as it might inform some of our deck building choices. Now when this is finished I hope we'll have a nice deck built around artists talent. My supporters on Patreon asked me to build a deck around it and this seemed like a nice home for it. So let's have a look. A 2 mana class enchantment saying whenever we cast a non-creature spell we may discard a card. If we do draw a card then we can level it up to level 2 for an additional 3 mana. Non-creature spells now cost 1 generic mana less to cast and at level 3 for once again 3 mana. If a source we control would deal a non-combat damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls it deals that much damage plus two instead. So we'll start out by grabbing our four copies of Artist Talent and putting them on our canvas. Now we also want to add Koth Fire of Resistance to our deck as it's a powerful planeswalker that will complement our red control strategy. We can use the plus two ability each turn to search for a basic mountain card and put it into our hand and that will also give us a card we can potentially discard to our artist talent. So when we cast a non-creature spell we can now maybe discard a mountain and keep our more relevant spells in hand. The minus three gives us a bit of removal to keep the board clear and then the minus seven ultimate is also quite achievable giving us an emblem saying whenever a mountain we control enters this emblem deals 4 damage to any target, so that can be one of our win conditions to help close out the game. Plus, if we have a level 3 artist talent on the battlefield, we can now potentially deal 6 damage when a mountain enters as opposed to 4, so that can also speed up our clock. While playing Koth on turn 4 is nice, what about playing it on turn 3? Searching for just colorless cards here will mostly reveal artifact cards, and then if we search for tap and add, it will leave mostly mana generating artifacts and after a little bit more searching we come across the Iron Crag, a 2 mana legendary artifact, can tap for a colorless. We won't be playing any creatures in this deck so the additional text isn't going to be super relevant. Now being a legendary is a real drawback since we may be stuck with additional copies in hand that we don't get to play. Luckily we do have our artist talent helping us discard and draw whenever we cast a non-creature spell so that can be a way of getting rid of excess copies we find along the way. And now I'm sure that if you've played standard before, you've come across some pesky little critters like the Hardfire Hero. Now if we can figure out a way to exile it, we can potentially avoid taking more damage from the mouse. And in the filters we want to look for instants and sorceries. Then we can look for red cards. And then look for things that deal damage. And that also potentially exile. And that will reveal Torch the Tower as a nice one mana answer dealing 2 damage to a creature or planeswalker. You can also maybe sacrifice some token to it to deal 3 damage instead. And then if a permanent dealt damage by Torture Tower would die this turn, we get to exile it instead. So this will be a nice answer to creatures like Hardfire Hero and Cacophony Scamp, so they don't deal any additional damage on the way out. Now also think of what the deck's game plan is. We want to keep the board clear, we want to draw some cards and eventually start leveling up our talents and deploying our planeswalkers to get those to ultimate as well. Against the decks that generate multiple tokens at once, we're not going to get there with this one for one spot removal since at some point they'll just make too many tokens for us to deal with. So we do need to find some sort of board wipe to keep the board in check. And we can once again go to our filter, look for effects that damage each creature, which will reveal some potential sweepers. Cards like Brotherhood's End come to mind. Now the drawback of Brotherhood's End in this deck is that it also damages Planeswalkers if we want to deal three to each creature. So if we want to filter those out we can just go minus Planeswalker and that should leave us with sweepers that don't deal damage to Planeswalkers and caught in the crossfire caught my attention as we can potentially cast this for just three mana at instant speed thanks to spree dealing two damage to each outlaw creature or potentially each non-outlaw creature which will be the case more often than not and if we want to deal with both we can always pay four mana instead so we'll add this into the mix as well 
and then if we move it into the three drop slot which is realistically where we might cast it you'll notice that the deck's curve starts to slowly emerge we often have lots of one and two mana plays and then it starts to kind of taper off as the curve becomes more expensive and that's important because it often allows you to spend all of your mana every turn which is a way to optimize your turns spending as much mana as possible so nothing goes to waste and another card that's excellent for spending all your mana every turn is an artifact called treasure map this is a card that's been reprinted in standard now and i've got the old school version from the original ixalan but feel free to use the one from the lost caverns of ixalan if you prefer that one instead remember this is your deck you're the creator so you can build it in whichever way you want and once we have a treasure map in play, we can pay one mana, tap it to scry one, put a landmark counter on it. When we get three or more counters, we get to transform a treasure map into treasure cove. And we also get a bunch of treasure tokens, which we can use to ramp out more of our spells. Or we can potentially keep the treasure tokens in play to eventually sacrifice to our treasure cove to draw more cards. So this gives us a bit of added card selection. Also remember, you can put a stop in your upkeep to scry one with treasure map before taking your draw step for the turn that way you can maybe draw into the answer you're looking for and that has definitely saved me on a few occasions and now that we've added treasure map we might want to look for additional instances and sorceries in red that generate treasure since those might be able to synergize with our treasure cove to then draw additional cards and ideally we look for additional removal spells that deal damage and that reveals hell to pay as another option a sorcery dealing x damage to a creature we also get to create a number of tapped treasure tokens equal to the amount of excess damage dealt to that creature this way and that also synergizes quite well with a level three artist talent which lets us deal two additional damage to opposing creatures so now we might be able to generate quite a few extra treasures with a hell to pay a way to ramp into our more expensive spells but also a way to keep our treasure cove fueled to draw additional cards so we will add four copies of hell to pay into the deck now hell to pay is a sorcery and that's not always the best answer to a plotted slick shot show off from the opponent and that's a creature you might come across quite often in the best of one standard meta so ideally we have a few more instant speed removal spells if our removal could deal five damage that would also be a nice upside since then our removal can deal with an opposing shieldred the apocalypse which can punish us for drawing additional cards with our artist talent or with our treasure cove so let's see what we can find and yeah galvanize could be a nice solution here two mana to deal three damage to target creature so answers a slick shot show off and then if we've drawn two or more cards this turn we get to deal five damage instead so in our turn especially we can cast it with artist talent on the battlefield draw an extra card and then by the time galvanize resolves it could deal with an opposing shieldred so i will be adding all four copies of galvanize as more creature removal if the meta game were to maybe shift towards including more artifacts then we could also maybe play a split of galvanize and a braid which can be a way for us to destroy opposing artifacts while still dealing three damage to a creature potentially and it's still legal and standard thanks to the lost caverns of ixalan printing so that's also an option now we are almost done building our deck although at the moment it feels like we're still missing an additional way to close out the game since we chose removal spells that are designed to target creatures instead of burn spells that can also target the opponent directly an additional planeswalker might do the trick if we filter for planeswalkers we see chandra hope's beacon which looks like a good fit while we no longer have cards like big score to synergize with it it's still a nice way to answer multiple threats at once thanks to the passive ability copying our instants and sorceries and that's another way to help keep the board clear to eventually ultimate or other planeswalkers as well and with a ramp from iron crag or the occasional treasure token from hell to pay we can also help a ramp out or six mana chandra now the mana base might still need a little bit of fine tuning of course we do want lots of mountains for koth that way we get to deal more damage with a minus three and so we have enough mountains to search up with a plus two we might still be able to fit in some additional utility lands to help us out so let's filter for lands and have a look and after a little bit of searching we come across a blast zone this can also be a way for us to deal with opposing artifacts and enchantments which we've neglected so far so we can add at least two copies of blast zone into the mix i'm going with a war of the spark version if you prefer the brothers war version feel free to add that one instead again you're the creator now we have a 60 card deck but it isn't complete yet until we add a few more personal touches 
think of it as your signature. So we get to change the card box art if we'd like. We get to change our sleeve. How about this nice lightning bolt? And then pets and avatar looks good. And then we also get to name our deck. And in honor of Bob Ross, how about bright red? One of the colors he has in his color palette. And then last but not least, we can also change our basic land art. And what better way to honor Bob Ross than to play the Bob Ross Mountain. The deck may honestly not work without it. So 22 of those. And then we can call it a day. Alright, so yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. We've got our early interaction and an artist talent. Hardfire hero, great target for a torture tower. But let's see if our opponent tries to pump it up first. Second Iron Crank will discard to our artist talent. And yeah, let's see if this works. Torture Tower response to deny the card draw. Opponent has a Monstrous Rage in response, but the Valiant trigger only happens once each turn, so they didn't get to give it a third point of toughness. And Torch the Tower, who wins the game? On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Artist Talent into Galvanize could maybe deal 5 damage in our turn. And then Koth, something we can try to protect. Opponent Red White could be the new Boros Tokens deck. Which uh, yeah can be a tougher matchup in the sense that they have answers to my 2 mana artifacts and enchantments with temporary lockdown. We'll go for the talent first anyway. And then they can also answer enchantments individually with uh, their instant speed removal. And Urabrask's Forge we also don't have a great answer to. So that can be a way for the opponent to pressure our planeswalkers. So yeah, could have a bit of a challenge on our hands. I think for now, play treasure map over leveling up the artist talent. So we can try and get this transformed as soon as possible. And then Koth is not going to be at its best here. Hell to pay, also not great. Uh, at least with Galvanize we can hit the uh, Forge token at instant speed. And Blast Zone can be an answer to their 3 mana artifact. Now we're very vulnerable to a temporary lockdown, which our opponent could cast here. But it's going to be a Caretaker's Talent instead to start drawing. So a Blast Zone on level 3 is kind of the goal here. And I hope they don't lock down in the meantime. So don't need more Mountains. Don't think I'm putting an upkeep stop. Might still play Koth. Although maybe I just need to play the Blast Zone and put one counter on it. Is that uh, the best approach? I guess that still allows me to scry. Could wait until I have four additional mana to immediately put two charge counters on it. Which means just having to wait one more turn. Yeah, I guess that's okay as well. And then for now I could level up the talent, even though it kind of just runs into a lockdown. And then Scry with a treasure map. At least I don't have any non-basics for Demolition Field, although I guess Demolition Field an answer to Blast soon. And now a second Forge. So I need them to kind of tap out and not try to use the Demolition Field on Blast soon. Which is why leveling it up in one go might be better. Hell to pay doesn't do much. Now we also have caught on the crossfire as a way to maybe deal with multiple tokens at once. So we'll pass a turn. Hope they don't uh, pay too much attention to the blast soon. Uh, 
Archangel Elspeth, perfect. So they're not removing the blast soon. Opponent makes a token, draws a card. We have ways to damage planeswalkers as well with Torch the Tower. We'll have to take a bit of damage, sadly. And then the question is, do I transform treasure map? I may as well wait to do it next turn so I don't have to waste any treasures. For now, take six. Take my turn. Iron Crag is basically free. So I can play it. Discard draw. Maybe get rid of Galvanize. Still need to make sure we have enough mana to sack the Blast Zone, which is three. So maybe I don't play Koth yet. Yeah, I could just sack the Blast Zone before they get to untap and maybe draw another card with a talent. Or I can wait until picking enough combat. Can only deal three at the most with Torch the Tower, so I won't be able to finish off Elspeth. And Elspeth also wait for them to eventually get back their three drops. So it's kind of a interesting position. We'll pass. And if they try and Demolition Field, we can Blast Zone a response. Demolition Field still an answer to the Treasure Cove as well. To prevent me from drawing. Our opponent wants to go to attackers, so we have to sack the blast soon now. Elspeth keeps plussing. And we'll take one. Transform treasure map. Galvanize does not damage planeswalkers. And our opponent's going to immediately use demolition field, it seems. And that's alright. Does give me the opportunity to maybe... Cast something end of turn here. Caught in a crossfire. Just to deal with the 1-1s. Although I can maybe wait for them to activate Mirex first. So I'll take my turn. Cast Koth. And then, yeah, we gotta... Kinda hope to draw into some answers with Artist Talent. Another treasure map's good. Koth also only damages creatures. Is our land. Play treasure map, can discard a mountain and draw. Might see removal on Koth. And then... Yeah, I need to torch the tower now. Can scry first with a treasure map, perhaps. Hell to pay. That one also only damages creatures. And then torch with bargain. Sacking the uh, treasure token now, maybe. Opponent's gonna get lost on a Koth. Discard Mountain. And find an Iron Crag. And another Galvanize can go to the bottom. So playing Iron Crag is just to cantrip with Artist Talent, basically. I think we pass. And then Plan is caught in a crossfire at instant speed. Our opponent can draw with uh, Fountain Port. And response if they'd like.
Finding a Chandra to damage Elspeth would help. Koth once again. Maybe time to scry first as we draw off uh, casting Koth. Yeah, our opponent just making tokens each turn is kind of annoying, since that will get us eventually. Plus to get a mountain. And then we can level up talent once again. Or I can uh, cantrip with Iron Crag to look for more answers. Another mountain. Alright, I think uh, I just pass. Getting caught in a crossfire once again. See if they plus Elspeth before attacking again. Third Mirex. Yeah, definitely a matchup where Mirex gets to shine. Alright, hell to pay. Now a way to generate a lot of treasure, potentially. And Beza. Just a 4-5. Okay, so can use Iron Crag to transform treasure map and scry. And there's Chandra. That's what we needed. Although, will it be enough? So Koth Plusses gets Mountain. And then by casting Chandra, I could still level up the talent first, so I deal two more damage. Opponent doesn't have white, so they can't get lost at instant speed. Yeah, I guess that's worth it. And use a couple treasures here. Discard Mountain, keep Hell to pay. And then Chandra only needs to deal 3 damage to Beza and Elspeth to take them out. And I can still protect my Planeswalkers with a Galvanize. I'm okay with Chandra taking one damage, I think. So it's gonna be one of those fights. Opponent has a Helix for Koth to keep it in check. I'll never give up. Take my draw step, find another Koth. But yeah, the goal is to try an ultimate here. So, plus Chandra for mana. Plus Koth for a mountain. Mirrodin was our land. And then Hell to Pay will make a bunch of treasure, but doing it for one is probably enough. Let's give it our all. Get two treasure since we dealt two excess damage. Discard mountain draw. And then I can still draw with Treasure Cove. Find another Koth. Yeah, if I can Emblem Koth, we're in business. If they can keep attacking Koth, it's going to be a little difficult. Opponent does go after Koth, so we get to copy the Galvanize here to take out both of the opponent's tokens. And hopefully Emblem Koth next turn. And at this point, we have more mountains in the deck, so I don't think I'm in a hurry to discard a Koth. Do we see a Lightning Helix once again? 
Archangel Elspeth instead. Now not much of a problem. And I'm gonna emblem first chance I get. So now playing a mountain is 6 damage. Might want to start going upstairs while Chandra deals with whatever's in play. Uh, although let's draw first with a cove. Find Galvanize, another answer to creatures. Yeah, I guess Chandra would have to minus 3 to deal with Elspeth. So maybe just mountain to take care of Elspeth is the way to go for now. And then Chandra can plus for another turn. Play another Koth. Can only play one mountain per turn. Probably want to hang on to the other artist talents, in case they eventually find a lockdown. And yeah, we're running sort of low on mountains, I have to be a bit more careful with how I use them. So we'll pass a turn. I guess we could double Emblem Koth at some point as well. And I don't think I discard and draw. Pretty happy with my hand. Opponent get lost on the artist's talent when they could take out a planeswalker. Just goes to show how good it's been for us so far. Alrighty, so Koth keeps plussing. Get another mountain. Play talent maybe after drawing with Cove. And then we want to level up as much as possible before playing a mountain. Probably using Chandra, I don't think I'm going face with it just yet. And then Mountain for 6 damage. Yeah, it's still gonna be close. Do I play Treasure Map or am I afraid of a lockdown? I guess I'll play it. Discarding Koth at this point. And caught in a crossfire could be another sweeper for us. So next turn I might pull the trigger on Chandra Minus to go face and uh, try and get the game over with. But the only reason we're still alive is thanks to Blast Zone. No need to discard, and our opponent explodes. Next turn, ultimate Koth another time. Play our land, now dealing 12 damage, and then Chandra can minus to win the game. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got an Iron Crag to set up our Hell to Pay times two. Yeah, this is not a great hand, but I'll try it. At least Iron Crank complements Hell to Pay nicely. And a negotiation makes me discard. I'll discard a mountain since it might have more cards that make me discard non land cards specifically. So then it's good to keep some of these in hand. Thinking of the uh, bandit's talent. So then we can just discard one Hell to Pay. And there it is. So, Hell to Pay gone, keep Iron Crag. And we may not get to 6 mana for Chandra before they make me discard it again. A Bronco we can at least take out while generating a treasure as well. So that gets us closer to Chandra. And 
and another Bronco. So play Chandra. Could just deal two damage here, that's probably fine. The other option was just making mana to play a treasure map, but no reason to let the Bronco attack and maybe draw more lanes. Opponent does, however, have an answer to our Planeswalker, but we can just play another one. And now I'll make mana to play treasure map. And set an upkeep stop so I can improve my draw step for next turn. Looking for more Planeswalkers, perhaps. Koth would be nice. Caught in a crossfire. Yeah, I think we can do better, even though it deals 4 damage with Chandra. Find another Chandra. Alright, can use the second plus one. Even though instants and sorceries aren't all that great here to get, since they would just be removal spells. So maybe we just keep using the plus two to build up loyalty. Even though I'm not going to use the mana. Once again, probably should have set an upkeep stop with treasure map, but got rewarded with Koth. So get to play it. Plus to get a mountain. And then maybe use Chandra for mana again. Although we're close to winning the game with a minus. And then now scry with treasure map, so we didn't shuffle the deck afterwards. Don't need to draw mountain. And do I play out the mountain? I think I do. Even though I could start holding them for more discard effects or maybe for the Koth minus 7. Now I will put an upkeep stop. Liliana can make his discard. But now we've got a target for Chandra's minus ability. So once again, Scry. Don't need Mountain. And draw another treasure map, that's good. So Koth wants to plus. Get a Mountain, now I'll hold it. Whereas Chandra can minus. Four is enough to deal with a Liliana. Four can go face. Play treasure map. And we can Scry end of turn perhaps. Put a stop in the opponent's end step. One more in my upkeep. And a shield root's fine. So, Scry. Mountain I could keep since it's good with Koth, but we'll find more. And a Blast Zone could be an answer to the Bandit's Talent eventually. So it's not a bad card to necessarily keep, but I want to be playing Mountains for Koth. Find an Iron Crag, which we don't mind discarding. Go to our main phase. Ultimate Koth. Chandra wants to deal with Shieldreds. Play my mountain to deal 4 damage to the opponents. Can now draw without losing a life with a treasure cove. In case I find something like an artist talent I get to play. And then pass a turn. So next turn we should be able to close it out with Chandra and Koth. And a Liliana is not gonna help them. The opponents could easily be holding a bunch of creature removal, cards like Cut Down and Go for the Throat, as we see one discarded. But those aren't the type of cards you need in this matchup. So, plus Koth to get a Mountain. And then play it for 4 damage. And two more from Chandra will do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Iron Crank could set up turn 3 Koth. Although we'll see if that's good enough. Facing red-white could be another control deck. Make that Jeskai. 
So yeah, against control it's going to be difficult. Opponent will have counter spells and answers for our planeswalkers and all their various permanents. Theran Spider, so it's an artifact build. Koth can only deal 3 damage with 3 mountains, but I still want to get it in play. And then next turn we can answer multiple creatures, perhaps. Could be a matchup where we were better off with a braid over Galvanize, but that's one of those choices you have to make when building the deck. And there will be meta games where you prefer one over the other. Alright, Bivouac's gonna get busy. Sapone can deal 5 damage to Koth now. Next turn we can still potentially clean up with both Caught on a Crossfire and Galvanize. Still gonna hide the blast zone for the time being, I think. Although this time they probably don't have a reason to send in the bivouac. So, yeah. Hopefully this works. At least the power stone's useful for treasure map. Opponent draws in response, that's fine. And found a Lightning Helix to finish off Koth regardless. So the game goes on, find another Koth. Although I don't have a way to protect it from the bivouac attack. So I think we go Scrying with Treasure Map first. And then maybe start leveling up Blast soon. Playing Koth is still somewhat reasonable since it's not going to die in a single attack, and it still forces the opponent to spend their mana. Sure, I guess we'll uh, still go for it, even though I'll end up shuffling again. Put an upkeep stop to maybe scry before drawing, and then ideally find another galvanize. Could also get there with a uh, torch the tower with bargain, sacking the power stone token. So yeah, bivouac can attack for 3. Thanks to the Power Stone, they could still Lightning Helix to finish off Koth. But it's just going to be a tap land. So, yeah, I think we try and scry. Bottom Mountain. And draw Mountain. So, don't have a whole lot going on, sadly. Although now our opponents might be more afraid of uh, attacking with the bivouac into all this open mana. It's going to be a synthesizer. Good reason to start leveling a blast soon. But they might be able to immediately make a bunch of constructs, which we won't be able to answer. And if they're playing a red, they might also have the uh, skitter beam battalion to immediately go off here. So, yeah, we seem to be in trouble. Don't think I'll be able to keep all this contained. Need to deal with the synthesizer, the bivouac, all the tokens. And our hand is literally all mountains. And it's gonna be an ill-timed explosion, at least that one doesn't damage planeswalkers. And put two counters on blast zone. Found our artist's talent, so can cast it. Maybe should have still scryed with the uh, treasure map when I had the chance. I can still activate Blast Zone with the uh, Power Stone token as well. And we'll pass a turn. This is when it enters, so we can respond with Blast Zone if needed. And the Might Stone and Weak Stone is a reason to sack Blast Zone here. Don't think I need to transform treasure map first, but I will put an upkeep stop. So now our opponent can send in the bivouac still if they'd like. Our deck is not the best at dealing with creature lanes, but we do have a few instant speed answers. Galvanize would still get it next turn, since we can potentially draw two cards with Artist Talent and Treasure Cove. Get out of my way. 
Although I guess this will still be tapped, so... So now with a level 3 artist talent, we could finish off the bivouac with just a single galvanize. We have the high ground. So may as well level up. Although Skitterbeam Battalion is going to have something to say about it. So, 12 hasty damage coming across. Won't be able to keep Koth alive. So, I'm going to wait on casting the Galvanize in case we find some sorcery speed removal so we can keep this to answer the bivouac. Chandra could clean up multiple creatures and then copy the Galvanize as well. So that would be a nice draw. Found a hell to pay. Could be a decent mana sink here. Although we also have to make sure we don't just die. So yeah, hell to pay. Let's say we do it for six. And then take out the battalion. Doesn't matter, token or non-token. They might have a way to reanimate it. So discard a mountain. Find another mountain. It's been the story of this game. Make four treasures. And then still have a five damage galvanize thanks to artist talent. So they just cast another battalion. We don't just die at least. Anchorage another creature land. So I will want to galvanize before the bivouac attacks. So it's only three damage, but two more from the talent is still five. And another Earth Rain Spider. At least the Power Stone's not completely useless, and they caught in a crossfire, perfect. So that will clean up the opponent's entire board. I guess I should be using the Power Stone here to cast another Iron Crag. Find a Koth. That's a good one. Artist Talent putting in work. Still gonna keep plussing to try and set up an ultimate eventually. Got a few mountains left, so don't mind playing one out. And then could maybe see what we draw off Treasure Cove while I have some mana floating. Another treasure map I can play. And then caught in a crossfire, dealing four damage to all their creatures is gonna be the move. Another Blast Zone's insurance in case of another synthesizer. Hopefully we catch the uh, Anchorage as well. Now if our opponent has removal for the artist talents at instant speed especially, we might regret not removing more creatures first. Anchorage activates. Bone moves to attackers. And now they're caught in the crossfire, just double checking creature types, but non-outlaw is good enough. And find another Koth. If our opponent can counter this, we might die. Opponent activating Thrine Spider in response. And that's acceptable. Finds another spider. Now I will need to find another Cod in the crossfire, just so we don't die to another battalion making 12 hasty power. That worked. Now we get to scry with treasure map a bunch. Don't need an Iron Crag, although it is a redraw, so it's not the worst. And Chandra I can keep. Alright, so Koth pluses. Can play a Blast Zone this turn. 
and then keep Blast Zone available, cast Chandra. Still probably okay discarding a mountain to look for another caught in the crossfire. Torture Tower might also keep us alive now. And we'll just add mana. Maybe draw with a Treasure Cove right now. 25 cards remaining. Our deck does tend to see a lot of cards. Alright, and a health to pay is missing a target. So, pass a turn. Plan is probably get Blast Zone to level 3. Opponent with a Lightning Helix on Koth to slow down an emblem. Don't waste my time. And there's a spider. Could immediately activate, so there's no point in using Torture Tower now. But a uh, level 3 Blast Zone can also maybe clear it. But yeah, Skitter Beam Battalion's kind of the bigger concern right now, I would say. Opponent with a side eye on Chandra. Copying a Torture Tower could also be a nice way to take out multiple creatures in one go. And now we can maybe help to pay on the spider to generate additional treasure as well. Our opponent will activate the spider now. And misses. So they must be getting closer to another Skitter Beam. Not sure if they're playing the full playset or maybe just a handful. And get lost on Koth. That's actually fine since we have another. So two charge counters on the blast soon. Take my turn. And play Koth. What do I discard? I'm kind of happy with all my cards and I have to start worrying about running out of cards in library as well. When this war is over, we have the high ground. So Chandra can make mana. I'll to pay for, let's say, four here makes two treasure. Sadly, the copy goes to waste. And I'll keep everything in hand. And then, do I play Mountain? I think I start holding them now for Koth. And then pass with double Torture Tower, Treasure Cove and Treasure Map available. L-Timed Explosion just to draw two. And there's a Synthesizer, so might have to put our Blast Zone to use. Either way our opponent gets to Scry. Keeps one on top. So I'm not in a hurry to use Blast Zone. Can scry and draw. Hell to pay, missing a target. Alright, take our turn. So I can draw quite a few cards here. Start by plusing Koth. And then Chandra. Still probably plussing for mana, I want to say. Find another Iron Crag. Also, I don't want to discard to hand size here. So maybe play an Iron Crag, discarding another one. Find a Hell to pay. And then Chandra can just make mana and pass a turn. And then next turn I finally get to Emblem Koth. Would like to find another Artist Talent. So we can amplify our damage even more. But we'll see. Assimilation Ages only exiles a creature. So it would just be to trigger Synthesizer. I think that's acceptable. Since we have hell to pay to easily take care of those. Three steps ahead to draw and discard. Alright, that's fine. Discarding no more lies. So we've got a better idea what our opponent's working with. And another synthesizer. So we trigger the current one. I think that's still acceptable. Way to blast soon all of them. 
and we can handle a 9-9 token, especially once we shrink it down after sacking the blast soon, which I'm not forced to do now. We could wait. 17 cards left, so it can still draw with Treasure Cove just fine. And another Aegis. So opponent's going for broke. Now maybe okay to sack the blast soon. That way I don't have to deal with additional tokens. And then if I torch the tower now with bargain it's 5 damage times 2, so still not quite enough. So I'll just wait until my turn to cast Hell to Pay, which is a cleaner solution anyway. Keep the instant speed answers for a skitter beam. So step one, maybe see if we can find another artist talent before playing a land on Emblem in Koth. Although I also don't want to end up discarding two hand size too much. So maybe just go for six damage now. Chandra can make mana. And then Hell to Pay for 7 will generate some additional treasure as well. So make sure we target the right one. Actually generate 3 treasure since it's now a 6-6. Don't think I need to draw any more. And then uh, pass a turn. Discarding a Torture Tower. Okay, so now every land is at least 6 damage. Chandra can deal 13 at some point. So it's not going to take too long to close it out. And without Synthesizer, their deck is a lot more manageable. So we can even beat another Skitter Beam. A Lockdown, that's a good one. So that will answer the Talents, which reduces my damage output. So in response, probably want to draw with Cove. Float some mana, maybe. Yeah, if they go lockdown into Skitter Beam, all of a sudden my damage output looks a lot worse. They also lose their tokens, admittedly. But they probably don't care. Alright, so 13 cards remaining. We know there's three talents left. So now a Skitter Beam looks a lot scarier when we can only deal two damage with a Torture Tower times two with Chandra. And our opponent's gonna get Lost Koth. So now we have more things to sacrifice to a Torch, potentially. Take our turn. Yeah, I guess uh, we're out of card draw engines now as well. But can still deal four damage with a mountain. Chandra is just going to keep plussing for mana since I don't want to exile cards from my library. And then at some point I can minus to burn them out. I guess we're getting close to that point with Chandra into another Chandra, so I think next turn we can set that up. Alright, so just need to survive one more turn basically. So I'll keep all the torches and then next turn 15 plus play mountain is 19 damage, and a synthesizer is not going to do it. Alright, so yeah, once they found a lockdown, things looked a little scarier. But just goes to show how good the artist's talents has been for us. Drawing through the deck and uh, amplifying our damage. Don't need to select two targets, I'm just good to deal 15 to the opponents. And playing a mountain to close it out. Alright, so we got to see our Monorat control deck in action, and hopefully we did Bob Ross proud. Now it can definitely take a while to close out games, even if you have control over them, so that can highlight some weaknesses. Cards like Orbrask's Forge and Synthesizer are cards we might want to abrade, as we can otherwise struggle to deal with all the tokens they generate, so maybe you replace a few copies of Galvanize with Abrade. We could also add a few more copies of Demolition Field into the mana base to answer opposing lands that might be problematic, creature lands or lands 
clients like the Mirax making 1-1 one -one tokens each turn can be kind of annoying if we want to try and ultimate a Planeswalker. So those are all potential changes you could apply to the deck. So after playing a few games, it's always a good idea to pause for a second and to reevaluate, look back at the games you've played, see if there's potential solutions you can find for specific problems without altering the deck too much. And the more you do that, the more the deck will improve and the better you will get at deck building as well. So deck building is very much a process, but the most important thing is still to have fun. So make sure you're having fun when building and playing these games out. But for now, the old clock is telling me to wrap things up. So I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.